Hello, in this video I'm trying to determine the area of the semicircle over a rectangle. So if I draw the outline that would be something like this semicircle over a rectangle. Okay. So to go ahead with the limits of integration, first we need to write the equations of the line. The semicircle, it's best to use the polar coordinates and for the rectangle, it's best to use rectangular coordinates. But if you have them both, then it's best to go with the rectangular coordinates as determining the polar coordinates for this rectangle is hard. So in rectangular coordinates, the equation of a circle is y square plus x square is equal to 1. But because it's a semicircle, it should be either y is equal to square root 1 minus x square or y is equal to negative square root. 1 minus x squared because it's positive in the positive y direction we should pick this equation so equation of semicircle is y is equal to square root 1 minus x squared this one let us take that along the x-axis so y is equal to 0 and let's also draw the y-axis here so this semicircle is centered at the origin and because this is another horizontal line it should have an equation of the form y is equal to a for this particular case let us take y is equal to negative 2 Again, we also need these two lines equation. They are vertical lines. So they should be along by x is equal to a, like x is equal to some constant. So let us take x is equal to negative 2 here and x is equal to positive 2 here. And finally, we also need to determine the corners here. So the coordinates of this corner would be y coordinate is obviously 0. For the x coordinate, it's nothing but the radius of the semicircle because we have chosen the radius 1 so that should be negative 1 and here it should be positive 1 comma 0 so this completes everything we wanted before we set up the double integrals one more thing we should consider is the region of integration clearly if you freeze an x coordinate here y is varying from negative 2 to 0 here but if you freeze an x coordinate in this region it's between y is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to square root 1 minus x square so the y coordinates up top are different so we should split the region of integration here at this point and here at this point so we should integrate along this region this region and this region so in the first region let us set up the double integral remember to determine the limits of integration we need to freeze one of the coordinates if we freeze the x coordinate y is varying from negative 2 to 0 so those are the limits of integration for y to determine the limits of integration for x we should vary these lines how far can these lines go? They can only go till negative 2 to this point here which is negative 1. X coordinate is negative 1. So those should be the limits of integration for x because these lines will cover this entire region dy dx. Plus for the middle region set up the double integral again. If you freeze a particular x y is varying from negative 2 to square root 1 minus x square. Similarly, for the x, it's between negative 1 and 1, dy dx. Again here, similarly, if we go by the these two steps, between negative 1, oh no, this is positive 1, and 2, y is varying between negative 2 and 0. Okay. Let's evaluate the integration. dy integral is y between 82 and 0 so 0 minus minus 2 and then you have dx and the limits of integration for x are between 82 and 81 so minus minus 2 is plus 2 plus 2 dx integral is 2x between 82 and 81 2 minus 1 minus minus 2 is plus 2 2 minus 1 is 1 2 times 1 is 2 so this integration evaluation is 2. Similarly, this one also will be 2 because this has the same symmetric structure on this side as well. So the only other integration we need to evaluate is the middle integration. So between negative 1 and 1. And here you have negative 2 and square root 1 minus x square. Integral of dy is y. And integral of dx we should do it only after we do, uh, after we do the first integration because y is dependent on x here so y negative 2 square root 1 minus x square so we substitute them square root 1 minus x square minus minus 2 is plus 2 now the limits of integration for x between negative 1 and 1 
this whole thing dx okay square root of 1 minus x square we need to write x as either sin theta or cos theta let us take x is equal to sin theta dx is cos theta d theta square root 1 minus x square square root 1 minus sin square theta we know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 1 minus sin square theta is cos square theta square root of cos square is just cos so that will be cos theta and if you multiply with dx dx is cos theta again so cos theta d theta and 2 cos theta d theta okay let's forget about the limits of integration for now and let's evaluate only the middle part so this is cos square theta d theta and this is 2 cos theta d theta cos square theta can also be written as cos 2 theta plus 1 over 2 it's in one of the trigonometric identities and then you still have the d theta and 2 cos theta can be written as it is so cos theta integration is sin 2 theta over 2 plus theta whole divided by 2 because integral of 1 is theta and cos theta integral is 2 sin theta 2 cos theta integral is 2 sin theta so now let us substitute the limits of integration before we substitute the limits of integration these limits are for x so we need to convert them to theta so when x is negative 1 then when negative 1 is equal to sin theta uh, sin is negative 1 at negative pi over 2 and similarly at positive 1 1 is equal to sin theta sin is positive 1 when theta is pi over 2 so we need to substitute those two negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 sin at 2 pi over 2 is sin at pi sin at pi is 0 so we don't need to substitute that in here if you substitute them in theta you get pi over 2 because I don't have space here I'm writing on the left and then again if you substitute pi over 2 here actually sin at pi over 2 is 1 so this won't become 0 this is 2 theta which is why this is 0 but this is not 2 theta it's just theta so sin at pi over 2 is 1 so that will be plus 2 now let's substitute the lower limits of integration 80 pi over 2 sin even at 80 pi is 0 and at theta so minus minus pi over 2 and then sin of 80 pi over 2 2 sin 80 pi over 2 is 81 2 times of 81 is 82 and because we need to subtract the lower limit minus minus 2 is plus 2 so plus 2 here and I forgot this 2 over here so at this pi over 2 when we substitute it for theta we also need to divide by 2 and here also we need to divide by 2 now we have everything 2 plus 2 is 4 and you have pi over 4 plus pi over 4 which is pi over 2 so 4 plus pi over 2 is the middle integration so first integration is 2 last integration is 2 the middle integration is 4 plus pi over 2 so 4 plus pi over 2 plus 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 is 4 4 plus 4 is 8 is 8 plus pi over 2 you can also verify this by doing this directly with the formulas we learned in high school so for this rectangle the length is 2 and the width from here to here x coordinate is varying from negative to negative 1 width is 1 so the area should be 2 for this rectangle also the area should be 2 for this rectangle from here to here the width is 2 and the x coordinate from negative 1 to 1 the width is 2 so 2 times 2 is 4 and for the semicircle the area is pi r square over 2 radius is 1 so pi over 2 plus pi over 2 so 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus pi over 2 is 8 plus pi over 2 but isn't it more fun to use the limits of integration than remembering the formulas it's good to derive the formulas isn't it for the next uh, video i'll come up with an interesting vegetable thank you for watching bye